This project is a potential powerhouse in the NFC and RFID space. It is the Chameleon Ultra, and the reason why I say potential is because it is currently in a pretty bad software development state. This project was semi-abandoned by the original developer Dennis or Dot.com, and the new developers or current developers need a lot of help. So my hope with this video is to bring as much awareness to this project as possible, as it would be a shame to see such great potential in a small package for NFC and RFID ethical hacking and cybersecurity to go to waste. So I hope you guys can enjoy this video, what insight I have on it, and potentially join the community. So the project that is the Chameleon Ultra is an NFC and RFID device. Um, I may have gone over already. All the links will be down below to everything, including the GUI by Tech, Game Tech Live, a really, really cool creator, um, to the GitHub, to the Creator Fund, and all the above. Let's get right into how to use this device. So I'm gonna be utilizing my Flipper Zero and this old hotel key card that I don't really use at all. Um, Actually, I don't use because I don't even know where this hotel is. So I will be screen recording and showing you guys on the side of this video. Um, on my iPad, the web GUI and how it works. So as you guys can see, when we press this and we refresh, you'll see the Chameleon Ultra pop up. You want to click that right away. It does have a timeout where it will shut off. So make sure you click that in a timely manner. Here it is. Um, as you can see, there's a slot manager where you can manage all your cards and your slots for the cards. Then there is your saved cards. I have quite a few saved here. Then you have read cards and you can read HF um, tag cards and LF tag cards. I've probably said this already, but if not, um, for HF tag, it's really, really niched you can't really read too many kind of hf tag cards and for lf tag cards um it's even more frustrating because you can not read anything but em4100 cards and that is about it so let's go to write cards i have not written a card maybe i'll do a video on how to do that later you got your settings and then a debug which you can enable from the settings but you shouldn't really use this unless you're going to do something developer related because it's pretty much useless to you otherwise. So let's get right into reading cards. Let's read this card. I've already read this card before, but um, read it again. We'll go ahead and place this on the card, press read, and as you can see, if it pops up, there you go. So now you have your keys. You can search from different dictionaries. I'll use the default dictionary because this has been good enough to crack this card in the past. And you pretty much just wait for it to go through all the keys. Um, it's kind of a slow process, not the quickest process, uh, depending on which device. Um, some devices are quicker than others, so do take that in mind. Uh, so I'll pretty much speed through this and pause the video here until it's done. So something that you guys can do with the Chameleon Ultra is you can try to recover keys if not correctly done or if it can't find the certain keys. This does work sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. I know it does work with this card. This sometimes takes long depending on what device you use, but as you can see, it won't take much longer because it has successfully found the keys. And once you find the keys, you'll be able to have two options and I'll go over those options right now. So now that it's recovered all the keys, you can either dump the card or export found keys. If you want to export to found uh, export found keys, you can save to a file. You can add it to an existing dictionary that you have set already, or you can create a new dictionary with these exact keys. I'll be doing none of those. You can also dump the card too. So if you press dump card, it'll load up. As you can see, it's kind of slow because I'm using the iPad. It is a lot quicker on the phone. So if you guys are using a phone, you will get a lot quicker processing. Uh, let's wait. So now that the file is ready, we're gonna go ahead, we can either save as a bin file to export for different formats in different devices, or we can just save it. I already have mine saved as hotel card, not on this one, on a different device. But as you can see, mine would be in slot two. 
If you guys want to move a saved card to one of your active slots, you can always just press around here and it'll show you your saved cards. You can go ahead and click it. You can also do some other cool things with these cards. You can go into the card settings, right? And you can activate certain features. So Gen 1A Magic Mode, Gen 2A Magic Mode, Use UID, SAQ, uh, SAK, ATQA from block zero. Collect nonces, which is where you would scan in with the card um, to readers. And then which write mode you would want to write it in. So it's pretty cool stuff you can do there too. And then that's what you can do with those cards. It does have a reader and write mode. Um, I find I never really have to use this, but you can go ahead and have full control over that if you want. So pretty cool features of the Chameleon GUI, which is what I like to use. You can use the CLI, um, but I find that the GUI is a little bit um, easier to use. It's better to use from what I can experience. So yeah. We're also gonna test out um, H, uh, LF cards. So this can only pretty much read a uh, EM 4100 cards. So we're going to go ahead and test with the flipper zero, kind of fuzz some cards, make them up. And if we press read, you'll see it's catching different default value cards. You can read all of these cards right here. Oh, I finished. So all in all guys, um, I'd say it's a pretty cool device. I definitely like some things about it. There's definitely some things I don't like about it, like the poor development in the current status. Um, hopefully Dennis or dot.com on Discord can come back to the project, can help um, further along develop the project. It definitely has quite a bit of potential considering how small it is in comparison to things like the Proxmark or the Flipper Zero being the size of the literal screen for the Flipper Zero. So there's a tons of uh, potential with this. But unfortunately, it's currently just so heavily limited um, and there's not much that you can do and that we can do with this device too much. I'll be constantly doing updates on this device. I'll be constantly doing uh, videos on it if anything happens along with other devices that I have. So if you guys are interested in any of that, please let me know. Um, if there's any questions you have on this device, let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe, check out the links. Um, all the links possible are in the description. And yeah, check out my TikTok if you want to see more short uh, form content and hope to see you guys later.